Vamos. Good afternoon, everybody, <clears throat> and welcome to the third event in the uh, alumni webinar series, Leaders Speak. I'm Molly Ashley, the Alumni Engagement Manager at Oxford Brooks, and I work in a development and alumni team within a marketing and communications directorate. We've been running alumni webinars throughout the year, inviting some of our key alumni in to share their stories. These, ranged, these have ranged from alumni stories and career journeys to webinars, to uh, book launches, to taster sessions, coaching taster sessions. So it's been very diverse. But this series um, focuses on four of our key alumni leaders. I'm very pleased to welcome this afternoon our um, alumni um, head of volunteering at Brooks at Birmingham University, Becky Mitchell. Um, I'll, I'll hand over to her and, ask, and she can tell you a bit more about her story. Thank you very much. Thanks, Molly. Um, so, hi, everybody. Um, first of all, thanks to Brooks for, for having me here this evening, for asking me to speak. Um, so, I'm Becky, and I am a fine art graduate. And over the next 35, 30, 35 minutes or so, I'm going to tell you um, a little bit more about me, about where my degree has taken me and why, and give you a few tips and hints that I've learned along the way and specifically around taking opportunities. And then finally, we're going to end with a, a, a Q&A. So could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So as you can see, since graduating 14 and a half years ago, I've done a variety of roles. Um, so from working in a school to working um, with in the homeless sector to working with young Muslim people at Mosaic and my current role as head of volunteering at the University of Birmingham. And um, I've written most recently, I have set myself up as self-employed as a meditation teacher. And I believe that my degree has had a, um, an impact on, on all of these choices and challenges that I've, I've decided to take on. Um, but before we go into that, we're going to take a little bit of a, a little bit of a step back. Next slide, please. Thank you. So um, why Brooks? So as you can see, there's a photo of me aged like I think about 1920 and I used to absolutely love that t-shirt I've no idea where it is now thankfully but it was like a, a Tweety Bite Pie t-shirt that I thought was just the best thing in the world so I was first in my family to go to university and my parents were always just incredibly incredibly supportive of both me and my younger sister but you only know what you know and oh can we one, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, you only know what you know. And um, and so when I was applying to university, there was no guidance that they could particularly give me other than just common sense because they hadn't been through the process themselves. So it was actually a teacher who was on my fine art uh, foundation course that suggested Brooks. And um, I'm from Birmingham, as you can probably tell by the accent. And I know that I, I knew that I didn't want to go too far from Birmingham, too far from home. So Brooks is about um, about an hour and fifteen minutes um, away. So it was actually the third university that I that I looked around, and um, I just fell in love with it. It was just a lovely, lovely setting, um, and where the fine art um, degrees were held is over at the Richard Hamilton Building, which is the the photo at the top. Which in my head, before I was found this photo, um, I thought was like a tiny little cottage, when actually it's quite a, a large, quite a large building. And um, it felt really nice, and I felt really, really at home there, and it had a good reputation. Um, 
and I didn't actually look around Oxford City Centre until I started my degree, which isn't something that I would recommend to people now, but it worked out well, happily. So my degree, um, oh, the bottom photo is actually in my halls of residence. So I was up at um, Crescent Hall um, towards Blackbird Lees, and that was my kitchen. So I dug out a load of photos at the weekend and um, yeah, it was quite nice to kind of reminisce and to, and to see where I used to live. So my degree, what did it give me? It gave me a chance to kind of explore who I was and also what I thought about the world. Um, it took me out of my comfort zone as well. And I met lots of different new people, but also different types of people that I wouldn't necessarily come across in my kind of day to day life in, in, um, in the Midlands. And I made lots of friends at Brooks, which was great. And some of my best friends now are people I met at Brooks. Um, who I have prom made them promise they're not going to be here this evening. So um, Greg and Sangeeta specifically, if you are here, then I will I'll definitely find out. But it also gave me an opportunity to think about things differently. And the biggest thing I think I learned was I really developed my sense of curiosity, which I think is something I've always had. But I know that that Brooks really brought that out of me and that sense of curiosity and wanting to explore things and the world as well. And I think that sense of curiosity has really helped me in my in the roles of, of I've done in my career, but also have has helped me in, in, in life as well. So I'm going to go back to my um, work history and how this curiosity has really supported me and how it's led me to take opportunities that I would have never, ever expected. So, could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So I left uni without a role to go to. And I think partly this was because I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and to say first in my family to so go to university and didn't really have a clue about what, about what came next. And um, I know in higher education that, that first in your family to go to university um, is kind of uh, is a thing that might be put under a widening participation background. Now, I would say to all those students, if you're first in your family to go to university or even, you know, if actually even if you're not, but specifically if you are, um, get a mentor. I think that is an opportunity that everybody should take. Uh, I didn't do that at uni. It was an option available, I believe, but I didn't think it was quite for me. Um, and I think that everybody would really benefit uh, no matter what uh, what stage they are in their career or life. But I think mentoring is incredibly valuable. So my first tip for the evening would be um, get a mentor and Brooks have a mentoring scheme called Brooks Connections. Um, but equally, if you're an alum and you're listening to this, if you're able to give some time back to the university in support of a student who's first in their family to go to university or that needs a bit of extra support, then I would really recommend that too, because volunteering is a two-way process and you'll get loads out of that opportunity yourself. So um, yeah, first top tip, get a mentor. And I've had mentors throughout my career, which have been really, really valuable as well. It doesn't have to be just somebody that you, that you have at uni, that's an ongoing relationship. So I left uni and I did a bit of temping work. And um, what was really valuable about that is it taught me what I didn't want to do, which I think is just as valuable as what you do want to do. And I knew that I didn't want to work in a conventional office setting. Um, and 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 I knew that I didn't I didn't want to be doing what I was what I was what I was doing for much longer. What was good about it, as well as knowing what I didn't want to do, is it made me move around places very quickly and it made sure that I got to know people very quickly and build relationships quickly, which has aided me in future jobs and also learn fast. But if we're honest, it wasn't the most exciting thing that I've ever done. And at the time, I also wasn't sure if I wanted to be an art teacher or not. So I 
took the role of, a, of an art technician working in a school and I quickly figured out that I didn't actually want to be an art teacher. Um, but I did have the summer holidays and the school holidays, which meant that I could travel and explore, which is something that I hadn't, I didn't do when, when I was growing up. And because I was earning, I was able to save and to, and to, and to travel and had some really wonderful experiences during during those those um, holidays and during the school holidays as well and I know there's a bit of a perception about people that travel that they have lots of money I certainly didn't I worked really hard to save up for that and in order to give myself um, really valuable opportunities so if you are able to to travel um i mean i didn't stay in the most glamorous of places i came back from one trip with scabies and i came back from another trip with bed bugs um so i was not li living in like you know the lap of luxury at all but it's all part of the adventure i think so if you do have the opportunity to to, to travel then i would i would certainly recommend taking that because you just meet so many different people and have so many different experiences and then after um, I'd kind of, I'd reached the end of my art technician uh, stint and I'd, I was like, I need to do something different. I don't know what it is. So I, my plan was to travel throughout 2019. Um, I was actually meant to start off in Mexico, but a month before I left, swine flu happened, which meant I couldn't go to Mexico or Belize. So I had to start off first of all in Guatemala. And I thought, oh God, I don't want to do this, and you know, this and the other. And it was really um, not what I wanted to do at all. But it was a really good example of not getting what you want can be really good. So I ended up found myself volunteering for an organisation that called From Houses to Homes, which built um, which built um, structures made out of bricks. Um, for people who hadn't had a home before and they had a lock on their on their home and a door which was a really big deal because often before that they were living in stuff that they'd found of like made of, of corrugated iron or sheets of plastic and stuff and that planted a little seed for me to then and I'll come on to that um, in the next slide but I was also able to work with sloths and sea turtles who are, I put, two, I put a photo of a sloth and a, and, a, and a sea turtle on there as well. So it's just really cool opportunities. But I would say in Guatemala, it was a great example of, 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 of having an opportunity that A, you didn't expect, but you got a hell of a lot more out of it than you could ever imagined. And it then planted seeds for future opportunities. Um, and I think not having a plan has worked out very well in that way because I've been able to you know, just just explore um, a careers that I would never have thought of previously just by being really open-minded. So can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So I got back from traveling and I didn't have a job and I was in, I was in Bristol in a queue for a Banksy exhibition. And um, I don't know whether you, anybody remembers this at all, but the queues were up four hours long and it was an amazing exhibition, but it was a long time to be stood in a queue. And I bought a big issue just to pass the time. And in the back of the magazine was a job advert. And I thought, well, I enjoyed the Guatemala stuff, but that's obviously very different to UK homelessness. I have no experience of homelessness, but you know, what have I kind of got to lose by applying? Um, so I applied and I, and I got the role, which was which was just fantastic. Um, and that around this time, I was pretty obsessed with this quote that I've put on, but there is another half to it. So I'm just going to read it out. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the boldness, sail away from the safe harbour, explore, dream, discover. And, and that just really summed up my traveling experience and also about me applying for the big issue. So there was, I thought, I'm not going to get this job and actually ended up being at the big issue for five years and totally loved it. I met people I certainly wouldn't have met in my day to day life. And big issue gave me an opportunity to really kind of um, expand my thought process on lots of things around the world and in, on poverty and inequality and 
a whole host of other things, but also really explore um, what my values were and what I wanted out of work. And I think we spend a lot of time at work. Um, and for those of you that, that uh, haven't graduated yet, you, you will spend a lot of time at work, unfortunately. So you've got to do something that fits with your value set. And I think if you can get that opportunity in a job that really ticks your boxes in terms of value, values, I think that is really incredibly, incredibly valuable. Um, and the big issue did that for me. Um, and I had so many amazing experiences and and I really saw the kind of best of humanity when I was there and how people just really look after each other. And yeah, it was a it was a, a great, great experience. Um, but equally, I didn't have any um, I didn't have any um, experience of homelessness. So when taking opportunities, I think it's really important to think what's the worst that can happen. So you see a job that you like the look of and you think I'm not going to get that and just apply. You might get it and you might be really surprised and you might be exactly the right person for the role. But don't worry about that you're not going to get it. Just apply and go for it and see what happens because the worst that can happen is you don't get an interview. So, and that really in the grand scheme of things isn't that bad. So I would certainly say, if you see something, go for it. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So I was at the big issue for five years and I managed about a third of the sales for managed about a third of the country for sales and it was absolutely fantastic and I left there wanting a new challenge and wanting to explore a different community that I didn't know and didn't didn't at the time understand so I ended up applying for a role at Mosaic and what Mosaic do is they match positive um, Muslim role models to to Muslim students in in inner city Birmingham and other cities and they match them through mentoring and it really sat well with my values as well because it's really about getting um to pe raising people's aspirations raising their chances of going to university raising their people's chances of of succeeding and it was just it was great and i learned i learned loads and loads and loads from that that was also another example of first of all not really having a plan and just trusting that everything was going to be okay and also just taking that opportunity um to say you know what i'm going to apply for this and if i don't get an interview what's the worst that can happen and once again learn loads and loads and loads um so you can see on the photos here that there is a photo of malala there's a photo of claude littner who is from the apprentice and a photo of prince charles and um each of those people and more out of mosaic i've got loads of interesting opportunities with mosaic so for example malala i was that uh, it was she just she just won the nobel peace prize and she was the youngest person to to do so and um and so she was 17 and i was at an event for work and then bumped into her dad obviously as you do and he um he said well malala's looking for some work experience um do you think that you could host her for work experience? And and on the outside, I was going, oh yes, I think that'll be absolutely fine. I'm sure we can work something out. And in my in my brain, I was like, yes, that's amazing. I love Malala. She's fabulous. Um, so um, Malala did a week's work experience with us as a as a team in Birmingham, which was just, oh my gosh, a really interesting week for me. I'm not sure it was that interesting for her, but for me, I was just, I thought it was just amazing, and also. Who gets the opportunity to host Malala for work experience? I was just chuffed a bit. Um, and that was just through networking. And I think that would be another, another tip that I would say is expand your networks, talk to people, um, and, and you don't know what opportunities are going to come out of, of, of those as well. But you know, the, the, the larger your network, you've got more people to, to kind of rely on as well. So I'd really recommend that. 
Yeah, Claude Littner. Um, I was his assistant on stage, which I was a bit nervous about because on The Apprentice he has a bit of a reputation, but I had to like I had to pass him things and not mess it up on stage, and then things like medals and stuff, which is just an interesting it's just an interesting experience. I put Claude Littner on there, and then finally Prince Charles. So. Um, Mosaic was one of the of Prince Charles's charities and he always used to say it was his favourite. Maybe he said that to all of his charities, I've absolutely no idea. Um, but he um, we had to do lots of events with Prince Charles. Um, and if we were all together in a, one space and um, we were heading off to the bar after, I'd be saying to you, buy me a drink and I'll tell you about Prince Charles's special cushion. But that is um, probably going to have to wait until... Um, until maybe we, there's a reunion or something, who knows. But with Mosaic, we once again didn't really have a plan and it worked out really well. And I think it's just having that trust that things will work out, um, things will work out okay. And apply for a role, even if you think you don't know anything about it, give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So I left Mosaic um, at the time. Um, the job had got quite stressful and my mental health had been suffering. And for various reasons, I applied for um, voluntary redundancy, which I then got. And when I was looking through his presentation, I found this quote, which I think is really lovely. I'm not sure who it's by. I'm sure somebody on the call will know. Um, what if I fail? Oh, but my darling, what if you fly? And I think that's really lovely and totally true. And my version of that, as I was applying for redundancy, is somebody had said to me, if you take a leap of faith, a safety net will always appear. And it really did. And actually, I think about that a lot now. Um, so I left Mosaic and... I didn't have a job to go to and I was like oh my goodness me what am I going to do and then I had an interview for head of volunteering at the University of Birmingham also thought I'm not going to get this and um, applied and then and then got it and then I had a three-week gap between um, the two roles which was a little bit shorter than I wanted to because I wanted to um, write a book about a turkey called tinsel but um that's a whole other story and that actually does exist now but it's it's you can't find it in waterstones itself it's self-published obviously um but i did want it a bit longer than, than than three weeks but um it worked out you know very happily and it was also around this time as i said my mental health was a bit was a bit wobbly um and it was around this time that i also started meditating um which um i will come back to in a minute and my head of volunteering role at the University of Birmingham, I'd never expected to work in a university. It didn't even cross my mind. I went for the job role instead and I thought this is going to be interesting. And once again, the opportunity has given me um, has given me space to work within my values again. So, for example, I now support people who are first in their family to go to university by getting them mentors and by um, leading a team who do amazing stuff to get students who can't afford to go to university, um, you know, linking them with alumni who can get scholarships and stuff. So, we, you know, we do amazing work and that's another reason why I think, think about your value set and go for a role that, 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 that complements those, those value sets as well. So um, that takes me up to my present, um, one of my present jobs uh, that I'm currently undertaking, and that's my four day a week job. And then, can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. So I um, started meditating around the same time I left Mosaic, and I've been meditating since. And then last year, I thought, Maybe it was the start of last year, maybe even the year, end of the year before. I'm not sure. Time has a strange, time is a bit strange at the moment. But I started a meditation teacher training course at the start of 2020, obviously not expecting 2020 to be as it as it was. Um, and I did my teacher training and I've been teaching meditation online um, ever since I'm doing 
sometimes six classes a week, which is a lot, and sometimes three, which is a bit more manageable. And, um, and it's been amazing. It's been really interesting setting my own business up, especially in a in a in a pandemic, um, and all the challenges that has brought. But the opportunity has also given me time for headspace as well, and to and to to check out from the from the world around me and just really focus on something that that's positive so i've really enjoyed it and i personally have got a lot out of helping people to to meditate and leading a calmer life um and you know i know that course participants who are on it have also got they've also got a lot out of it so it's been a really good two-way two-way street and um yeah it was just an opportunity that i had and i just thought why not once again what is the worst that can happen um, and I partly have been really reliant on my networks that I have built over the over the over the years in in my in my job roles, um, in order to to start my business off, and that's been really valuable as well because ask for help. We're at work a lot of the time, and um, but there's also a lot and there's a lot of people that will will, will want to help you. Um, and either help you if it's your own business or help you if you're struggling at work as well. But I think it's really important to do something that that kind of makes you happy, but ask for help as well. Um, and uh, just an opportunity. I think it's really important to take the small opportunities as well. It's before Christmas, I was listening to Six Music and they have a section about businesses, about independent businesses. And I just thought, well, I'm just going to write it in. It's not going to happen. You know, I'm not going to get on Lauren Laverne's show and speak to... 1.4 million people that's ridiculous so I typed something didn't think anything of it and sent it off and then six weeks later they said oh we're going to feature you and present moment meditation tomorrow and out of that that's like such a small opportunity that meant that I've, I've got clients out of it I've also got loads more um Instagram followers as well, which has been good because they could be end up being future clients or friends of future clients, for example. Um, so I think life's about taking those small opportunities that you have as well to um, to make them build into bigger ones. So I've been building the business at the moment um, since June and I'm not sure where it's going to take me, but that's OK because I'm just being quite relaxed about it and just letting it letting it work itself out. Um, but if anybody, you know, if you do have these opportunities that come your way, then I think, you know, definitely, definitely go for them. And if you if you do what you love, then you're going to be good at it and it's going to be easier and it's going to be it's going to be more of a, a pleasure and a joy to you. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So. I was thinking about what I have learned over the years and what I wish that I'd known. So I think one thing I wish that I had done is I'd worked a bit more nine to five or at least 10 to four on my degree, Monday to Friday, because that was an opportunity I probably could have made a little bit more of. But equally, I know that that would have been um, at a disadvantage to other areas of my life, which I wouldn't change either. But I think that I could have done a little bit more of that. So I think that was an opportunity that maybe I I missed. Um, I think have, if you've got the opportunity to be curious and to explore, then you, that's such a valuable thing. And if you've got the opportunity to do what makes you happy, I would really, really recommend that. Also, some things sometimes feel like the end of the world, but rarely they are. I do believe that you can work most things out. Try new things if you have the opportunity and don't put pressure on yourself either. I think that most do think, yeah. think most things do work out. Um, I've put here, it's okay not to have a plan. I haven't had a plan for any of my roles and I feel like that's worked out really well. And maybe I've, maybe it's been a bit of luck. Maybe it's been total luck. I don't know. But if you try something and actually the role isn't for you, you don't have to be there forever. You can leave and you can get a new role. But build your networks, get a mentor as well um, and be open minded. And if things don't go to plan, you're going to learn from it, such as me not being able to go to Mexico. I 
ended up having a, probably a much better experience and I had one of the best experiences I've ever had by going straight to Guatemala. So not getting what you want can be an amazing thing. And then finally, I would say that remember, if you're going to take a leap of faith, a safety net pretty much always appears. Next slide, please. So I think now we're going to open it up to questions. Hi, that, that was really interesting, Becky. We've got uh, a few questions here. Um, I've definitely got some questions for you privately about Prince Charles's cushion and the <laughs> the turkey called tinsel, but that's for another conversation. <laughs> some great tips um, that you've you've you know talking about your journey and your tips have been great about your mentoring tips. Um, I've noted down here in the value set that's a really strong one, isn't it, for the future of a role that you're going to possibly be in for quite a few years, and the sense of curiosity that's that's a that's a really nice one as well. Um, but uh, if uh, audience have any questions, if you can just put them in your um, question tab on the right of the panel. I've got a few been sent through already, but if any, anyone else has some, just pop them in and I'll read them out to Becky. So the first one that we've got in is um, looking at the, um, they said very interesting, um, such an interesting diverse career you've had. Are there any negatives from having a portfolio career that you can think of? Or, I mean, is there any kind of downside to that? Or is that the future of, of work now? What do you think um, about that? I don't think so. But equally, I know that other people would disagree with me. And I don't think so because I've got such a a, there's a there's a there's a common thread that runs through everything that I've done. It's not totally random. Uh, there's a thread about kind of um, being in supporting roles and to, and um, and you know working with people. So I do think there is a thread, but equally, it you know it's been a wiggly road. I think, but you gain so much from that. And I personally have gained loads from it. And I do think that has an impact in my in the work that I do as well. So having a diverse portfolio of jobs that you've done in the past, I don't think is a bad thing at all. Um, I think that um, there are experiences that I can build on that, that I've had that I can build on and take into my into my um, into my my current work, my current work. Um, but even if you've got um, if you have got that diverse background in, and jobs and think especially with mine where I've worked with lots of different communities that are outside my my usual sphere of who I would meet I think putting by myself putting myself into those into those um into those situations I know I've developed a lot on communication and talking to lots of different people I think that's really valuable but I also know that some people prefer a much more linear route um, and I think both is fine um, but I wouldn't say it was a disadvantage for me I think it's 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 a positive but um, I think it's part of that doing what makes you happy and not worrying too much about Actually, if my CV looks a bit looks looks like it's a bit meandering, that's okay. I've I've enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I think that that's right. It's um, life, isn't it? And enjoying your yeah. life as well. Work is part of your life. No, that's that's a good point. Um, we've had one also around art and your art degree and um about the mindset that an art degree gives you. Is there anything that you think? Has helped you from from having that creative start to your you know higher academic career. Is is that something that's helped you along your um, route of future roles after that? You know this sort of you know you've got a creative start, haven't you? Um, what what do you think about that? I'm going to turn the other light off and say that's fine. Halo again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. And I think there's that sense of curiosity, that sense of um, what Brooks did is they, they got us to really explore different ideas and then re-explore them and explore, explore, explore. And, and I think that has been really has been incredibly valuable because actually you can you can take that into any situation and any job role. Um, so I think that mindset was really was, you know, it was incredibly positive. Um, and I think that um, 
Yeah, Brooks really honed that as well, and just the way that we were we were asked and, and taught to 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 challenge things as well. Um, and I think in terms of creativity, um, I do a lot of creative stuff that is now, but would be kind of my downtime, um, which is which is great because it's a great way of kind of switching off, and I think that's really important. Um, and I think that. In my current business in present moment meditation, it's probably made things a little bit easier in some respects because when I'm doing social media stuff, it just comes a bit more naturally about being creative. So about how where you position things for your social media posts, or um, you know when I'm creating posters, or if I'm trying to come up solve a problem, I think I approach that in quite a probably a creative way as well. So um yeah it's it's given me loads of things and i think it's given me a really mm. good kind of foundation for other jobs as well and just because you do a degree in one thing it doesn't mean you can't do a degree that you can't work in another area um because that's you know lots of people do that and, and have really fulfilled careers from it mm -hmm. thank you yeah i think you're right that's thinking out of the box that sort of creative side is, is you know definitely problem solving and um being able to use those pieces going through um um, sounds good, yeah. Um, and we've had one more, which is about um, your meditation and how you can use meditation um, within your work uh, life balance. Is, is there something that they do the two mesh together well? Um, is it something that um, we can use as, as a sort of tool to help us further our careers? Um, what, what do you think yeah. around that? Absolutely. I mean, I could talk about meditation for hours. It's, it's. I think it's just amazing, um, and has really helped me kind of slow down my responses to stuff because naturally I can just react to stuff, and um, and it just slows for me personally. It just slows me down. It keeps my mental health a lot more, a lot more level as well, which is incredibly valuable from a, a work context as well um and it stops me i have a, a natural tendency to worry um but meditation helps kind of get those worries into perspective and that's how i've found it i think in terms of how people can bring it into their 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 kind of day to day there is you don't there's what in present moment meditation I'm almost doing a little bit of myth busting meditation. So I would say we're not going to do Instagrammable meditation where we're going to be sat in a lotus position wearing floaty clothes. If you want to do that, knock yourself out, that's fine. But you're probably on the wrong course because we do meditation that's for that's accessible, that, that real people do in their day to day life um, mm. and meditation that works for individuals without feeling like they have to be under kind of any any meditation pressure to look the part or or to to feel the part of a meditator because that doesn't really work and I don't think that's setting anybody up for a good meditation but there mm -hmm. are certainly things you know we all have stresses throughout the day and our adrenaline peaks and dips throughout the day um it's just a part of our flight and fight or flight system that we our brains haven't quite caught up with yet and meditation mm -hmm. can help slow those down as well so I know that um that when I have stresses at work, I will just do a little kind of breathing technique for a few for a few minutes. Um, and I think what's a really nice one that I'll that I'll show you now on your hands is you um you, you can do this under the desk as well. So no one even knows you're doing it if you're at work. And mm. you put your finger on the base of your thumb and you tr you're tracing your mm. Um, hand but as you're, you're you're breathing in and then you're breathing out and then in and out and you can do you know do it much slower than this of course you get all the way to the end and then switch and then do it on the other on the other hand and that means you're taking 10 just mindful breaths and you mm. don't have to count 10 because your fingers are going to do that for you but it just means that um, you're just taking those breaths and you're taking a little bit of time just 20 seconds just to recharge and refresh yourself and you can do it in the middle of a meeting and no one knows what you're doing so if a meeting's a bit stressful that's one that I rely on quite a lot um, yeah. 
So there's, def there's different ways that you can bring meditation into your actual day or, you know, sitting for 10 minutes of a morning and focusing on your breath is really, is, I find, of, of huge benefit as well. But I could yeah. talk about meditation for the rest of the <laughs> morning. <laughs> That's great though, to be able to think about because we've all had a quite well lots of us have had quite stressful years with change of various types of change and uh, so it's really nice to be able to you know to remind us and maybe maybe we can share some of your details on Instagram or something around your, your business if you're interested to share it yeah. with the, mm -hmm. that'd be good and little tips like that are great aren't they because those are just the ups and downs of life and dealing with stresses that we need to deal with which mm -hmm. are part of working life really. That's great. Um, one other person is very interested to meet you and share details, but I can share that afterwards with you. because We've got a, a new volunteer coordinator at Brooks. She's reaching out to you, but I'll send you those different separately. So that's really nice. Thing. Um, she's called Maya. OK, well, that well, that's been really, really interesting. And, um, you know, I've definitely picked up some little some tips I've written down and, uh, um, you know, that great to hear your career and, and the development and all the and all the things you've done from your traveling to your work and the diverse jobs you've taken have been you know really nice to be able to highlight those the benefits of, of, of the things you've you've got out of those and, and show our audience all, all the benefit of having a diverse careers like that and, that and not having to have a big plan and not everybody has um and you have an uh, you still got a rich working life and, and personal life so that's been really interesting to hear um thank you very much becky and, and you know thank you very much for giving your time um I know we've been talking for a, a year now and again so I was really pleased when you said yes <laughs> and um you know uh, keep in contact and, and do share your details for your business and we'll um share those on LinkedIn with uh, with the audience um so uh, just the next thing to say to the audience we have our final event next uh, week after next on International Women's Day with uh, Plathia Specko She's actually talking about adapting and keeping afloat during pandemic, the pandemic. So she's on the 8th of March on the International Women's Day at 5.30. So um, hopefully we'll see you all there and um, have a lovely evening and a big thank you again to Becky. Thanks, Molly. All right.